Sometimes, the last thing that players think about whenever a new expansion drops is the settings within the game. PC players have quite a few more options to select from, but with the next-gen consoles being updated to improve both FPS and overall load times for Beyond Light, I thought it might be helpful to go over some of the more important settings that the next-gen consoles should pay attention to. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Man of Cole, and today, let's talk about the best settings to use in Destiny 2. Before we get started, make sure to click the red subscribe button right underneath this video. It is a free way to support the channel. I make destiny guides every week from things like PVP loadouts, weapon testing, and PVP meta guides. So if you haven't already, make sure to click the subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. So as I mentioned earlier, PC players are going to have quite a few more things to tinker with compared to their console counterparts. However, the PS5 and Xbox Series X got a massive update that allows for a whole bunch of graphical upgrades in Destiny 2. The first big upgrade is that Destiny 2 on console is now going from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second, and even up to 120 frames per second in the Crucible. The second big upgrade is that consoles will now have a field of view slider, allowing you to see more of the environment around you. The last major upgrade is that load times for destinations and menus are drastically faster than on previous console generations. And from my experience, it is very comparable to load times on PC. I was fortunate enough to be able to snatch up an Xbox Series X a few weeks ago, and since this update has come out for the console, I've been extremely impressed with how comparable it is to PC load times. I currently have an RTX 2060 graphics card in my PC, and there really is only about a few seconds of a difference between loading into the tower and other destinations. Alright, so let's start with opening up the settings tab and looking on the left hand side where it says video. This is where we are going to find all of our next gen update settings. This screen will look the same whether you are on PS5 or Xbox Series X. The first thing that we see is the 120Hz mode for Crucible only. This is a pretty easy one, there should be absolutely zero reason to ever turn this off. If it's not already turned on, make sure to turn it on, you'll understand why when you go into a PvP match. Next is the FOV slider or the field of view slider. Now originally on consoles the default FOV was set to 85 or an 85 degree view. Now, it can actually be adjusted to anywhere between 55 and 105 degrees, which is the same as the PC FOV slider. So what do these numbers mean? Well, the higher the FOV number is, the more you can see around you. Most people like to put this on the highest setting it can be. However, the higher you set the FOV slider, the more resources that are required by your console. So you may end up experiencing some screen tears or other visual discrepancies in moments where there may be a lot of action happening at one time. I usually go with 105, but I know a lot of people who are happy with using anywhere between 90 and 95. This is totally your preference though, as it will take some time to get used to if you decide to change it from the default value. Next is Motion Blur. Motion Blur is intended to make the game feel more realistic. Anytime you quickly move from side to side, you will experience some blurriness on the edges of your screen, kind of like a whoosh effect. Naturally, with this setting off, you will increase your FPS because you are using less resources. I almost always turn this setting off, as not only does it benefit your FPS, but in the Crucible, it's just one less thing that disrupts my vision when I'm trying to evade or engage an enemy. Again, my preference is to turn this off, but if you're going for a more realistic experience, you can leave it on. Alright, next is Chromatic Aberration. Chromatic Aberration is something that a lot of people who played Destiny 2 on console when it first launched had been asking about. Chromatic Aberration intentionally distorts certain images within the game. Almost like viewing a 3D movie without wearing the 3D glasses, although not quite to that extreme. It does not really affect FPS at all, so this setting is more of a personal preference. There's not a ton of it in Destiny 2, but in other games it could be higher. I turn mine off so that I know I'll always have sharper imaging, but again, if you're someone who is looking for a more enhanced experience, leave it on. Lastly is Film Grain. Film grain is meant to soften images and make them a little less jagged, which often gives them a kind of washed effect. If you load it into Destiny 2 on one of the next gen consoles and you instantly noticed that it looked different, like something just wasn't right or that the colors and shapes seemed a bit off, that's likely due to film grain. 
By turning off film grain, it should get rid of any of that washed out effect you might be seeing in the game. My preference is to turn off film grain. And that's all the big graphic changes that came with the recent next gen update. If you use a controller, make sure you check out my video on how to create and customize your button loadouts on Xbox and PlayStation controllers. You should see a link to that video on your screen right now. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at manofcoal underscore. Links to all of my socials are going to be in the description box down below. Thank you all very much for watching. A positive rating is always appreciated. And as always, we'll see you.